Hello guys, uh, welcome back and uh, today let's talk about UI and specifically about UI for ML applications. Uh, you know, ML is a bit uh, special comparing to uh, other domains like uh, enterprise when you implement <coughs> data uh, processing and uh, read update delete. Uh, when we talk about ML, uh, we should uh, keep in mind that uh, usually we work with complex data structures and we need to transfer uh, quite uh, large data sets uh, from UI to the model and uh, backwards and so on. And these data structures usually are complex uh, if uh, different fields, different types and, and, and so on. So, uh, when building UI uh, for ML apps, and I'm not talking about just like a one page where you have um, like some uh, input form and then you display the picture and so on. Usually when you build uh, real UIs for ML, uh, there would be more complex. Uh, uh, there would be like a dashboard uh, screen, then there would be another screen where you would uh, track um, your uh, model uh, behavior uh, when it needs to, to, to run the retraining and so on, then there will be another uh, user-facing functionality where uh, you would get data from the users, produce, uh, return back the results and so on. So those UIs uh, usually in production system would be uh, complex. And specifically, uh, if, it, if you look into one specific example, uh, which we are working on, um, uh, pipeline for uh, document uh, processing automation, in this uh, in this use case, we need a UI where a uh, user would be able to open a document, uh, then we should be able to visualize uh, output from the OCR on top of the document, then user should be able to pick specific element from the document and uh, in the form he should be uh, assign a label to that field, uh, review automatically generated labels and so on. So the form uh, is dynamic because we, we, you have different set of documents, different set of fields in the documents and this means the form which uh, displays those elements is dynamic. Uh, based on specific document, it will be one set of elements rendered uh, for another document, another set of elements rendered, and you may have different uh, types like dates, uh, numbers, currencies, uh, text, uh, text boxes, and so on. And <clears throat> based on every document, uh, the form will be different. So this means when building UI, you should also mm, be able to build dynamic UI for uh, ML use cases. And yeah, <clears throat> I was uh, I was looking into different options uh, for our product for Skipper. What kind of UI we could use to build um, uh, to build UI for uh, ML application? And you know, because uh, you you typically you implement ML with Python, uh, then it's kind of natural and native choice is to stick with uh, Python infrastructure to build UI as well. This is what I learned. And this is why I was looking mainly into um, such platform, uh, which is called uh, Streamlit, uh, which helps to build UIs for uh, ML and data science ops. Then I was looking into Django framework, and also I was looking in uh, other alternative, uh, like a JavaScript alternative with React. And I was trying to compare and see which works uh, best for our case when we have a custom uh, ML application, uh, complex application with multiple screens, which uh, which technology we should use. And yeah, we'll go through each of them, but uh, I think in our case, uh, uh, I did uh, research and I tried to implement some proof of concept applications and for us it worked uh, very well with uh, Django framework. Because Django framework um, is native Python, uh, you could also work natively with um, such uh, ML uh, data structures like pandas, num numpy, and so on. And um, with Django, uh, you could easily uh, implement uh, uh, UI and you could plug in JavaScript, CSS, and make UI look good. And uh, UI is server generated. This means um, uh, you don't overload uh, user browser uh, with uh, heavy functionality and uh, it's easier to build larger application when it's uh, server-side rendered because you have more control over the code and, and, and so on. Uh, okay, let's uh, go to uh, my desktop and let's go through a couple of um, uh, use cases, a uh, uh, couple of um, materials that I would recommend uh, each of you to go uh, through and to, uh, check different options and to learn about them. And this this is based on my experience. This is what I did uh, as well. So first one is uh, Streamlit. This is like a platform which uh, 
on the server side, you also can, uh, with Python, you can implement different widgets and you can render uh, uh, UI components that are related to ML. Uh, you can implement data entry and so on, uh, display uh, images, display output and, and things like that. And you can deploy it on your own or you can deploy it on a streamlit uh, cloud uh, environment and, and host from there. And <clears throat> I think this uh, option works well uh, when you have rather standard uh, UI for smaller application, which is not very custom. And when you just want to display uh, like uh, some data entry form to grab the parameters, then you run uh, the model, uh, get back result, display it. And uh, there is no, uh, you don't plan to implement any integration with other parts of uh, of your application like your dashboard or with some uh, user registration or uh, some custom data entry uh, connection to the custom database and so on. So if you focus, uh, uh, if your main focus is to uh, display <clears throat> and, and give nice UI to access and interact with your ML model, then I would recommend uh, Streamlit. Another option is uh, Django, and this is what I was looking next. And Django is a very popular Python framework to build uh, backend and frontend. Uh, many people, they are confused for some reason, and they think that Django is mainly for the backend and for the frontend, you can use something else. Yes, that's true if you want to build UI which runs on the client side, uh, like with React uh, uh, or other, uh, other toolkits or, or frameworks. Uh, but what is good about Django that it's a full framework and it comes uh, with batteries included, as they call it, and you can build uh, backends uh, and you can implement with um, Django templates, uh, with HTML templates, you can implement UI as well and you can plug in <coughs> into this UI data structures directly uh, from, from Django Python structures. This means uh, such types like uh, NumPy or um, uh, Pandas are supported out of the box and then you host um, uh, this uh, UI from the server, uh, it's server generated and client get, gets the HTML. And so instead of getting uh, the rest uh, uh, information from the server, uh, client gets uh, HTML directly. And uh, in this case, you don't have single page application, you have multi-page application, you navigate between pages, which is uh, maybe uh, not ideal sometimes, but for sometimes it's great. Uh, because it allows you to separate uh, uh, different functionality into different pages instead of uh, loading an uh, entire uh, stack into a single page and uh, overloading the browser. And also it works great for <clears throat> uh, uh, to, to split the logic into different uh, uh, parts and uh, focus separately on, on, on different templates and so on. And with uh, Django you get uh, lots of functionality out of the box like security, user reg registration, um, then you, you got uh, out of the box um, utilities to implement create, read, update, delete functionality. It comes with the database included. If you want to use uh, out of the box Django database, it's very easy to define um, database models and auto generate stable structures for you. And it uh, automatically generates uh, UI forms to, for data entry, for search functionality, and so on. It's, it's great. And with all this um, infrastructure, you can. Uh, easily implement uh, UI that uh, allows to grab data, update data, store it in a uh, local database, then uh, use whenever you want this data uh, to train the model, to get back the results of the model, to present, present it to, uh, to the user and so on. Uh, and it allows to implement any custom logic uh, as, as you want. And yeah, this is a great course on FreeCodeComp. Um, uh, I'll, put, I'll put a link below the video which explains how to use um, uh, Pandas, Matplotlib, and more specific uh, ML libraries with Django. And by the way, if you want, you can use Django for backend only and expose REST services from Django and use uh, UI framework uh, on top of that. But in this case, I think uh, you may also look, if you, want to, if you want to expose REST services from the backend and you, you want to use some another UI on uh, UI framework or toolkit, then you should also look into the fast API because fast API uh, allows very nicely and easily to implement uh, REST backend. So to me, uh, main Django advantage is that uh, it allows to uh, define server side UI in very clean and um, uh, correct way and integrate it with uh, Python data structures. 
Yeah, another tutorial for Django that I highly recommend because it's very step by step. It explains all the essential things that you would need to build UI uh, from the uh, login functionality, user registration uh, up to the create, read, update, delete, search, and uh, styling as well. So this this guy, uh, Dennis, he uh, have a great set of different tutorials, and I would put a link to to these tutorials well below the video. And Another option, uh, if you don't want to use Django or Streamlit and you want to build just, uh, you don't want to use Python for the UI, you can go, I think, with React. It's uh, one of the most popular toolkits to build UI. It's not a framework because it doesn't cover everything you need to build UI, but it, it's the main focus is uh, on UI components and uh, single page application implementation on UI. And yeah, <clears throat> if you I think need to, if you want to use lots of JavaScript and lots of dynamic stuff on on UI, then uh, probably then it makes sense to go with React because it's a pure client side toolkit and uh, you can implement uh, all this dynamic flow and uh, and 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 so on with uh, with React when it, because your main focus will be on on JavaScript in this case. <clears throat> but you should keep in mind if your uh, data structures that you send to ML model and get back are quite complex. Then, if you expose them for the REST service, you may uh, face some uh, data conversion issues because uh, you may get data back to the client side uh, on, which runs on reactive JavaScript, but um, uh, you may lose some precisions or you may need uh, to implement some da uh, like a date processing fields additionally uh, that you would not uh, otherwise you would get natively from the Python. Uh, yeah, simply because you transfer data through the uh, uh, basically REST um, uh, data structure from the backend to the client, and a client runs on JavaScript, so you may need uh, you may uh, need to apply some more effort to process data in this case. Yeah, but uh, if UI is as I mentioned is very dynamic, uh, you have different flows, you uh, you have some different feeds updating and so on, or you may need uh, maybe you would want to use some. Uh, uh, cool, uh, out of the box available React components. <coughs> then you would go with React, but in this case, uh, you may have some issues uh, on on data processing, and you would need to put some more effort over there. Yeah. Okay. So to summarize, uh, the choice to I was looking into different options to build UI for our ML product um, uh, Sparrow that uh, implements. Uh, uh, document uh, processing automation pipeline, uh, data extraction, extraction, classification, and and so on. And I was looking into uh, Streamlit, uh, Django framework, uh, and React. And my choice was to go with Django uh, because it's uh, uh, native uh, and runs on Python, and uh, <clears throat> it's very close to uh, ML infrastructure which runs on on, on Python as well. And you can expose uh, complex data types and structures easier to the UI from uh, from Django, uh, especially when you're not using uh, REST, but you're using native um, Django UIs. So thanks for watching, and hopefully next time um, I'll prepare uh, some small application on Django and I'll ex explain my own experience and uh, give feedback uh, about different uh, functionality. Of, of Django. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.